Sup everybody, I'm James Stankwitz here at Echo Hill Outdoor School on our beautiful campus in our Native American site. And right here before us, we have our authentic dugout canoe in the style that people living in this area 500 years ago, a thousand years ago, maybe even longer would have been making boats like this. But you have to imagine back then trees would have been much bigger than any trees you see today. This tree, which might be 50, 60, 70 years old, would be a small tree in comparison to some that were in the forest. When Europeans arrived on the east coast of the United States, there are accounts of canoes being big enough and long enough to hold 40 grown warriors. That is incredible to think about. Big war canoes paddling across the Chesapeake Bay. And the way that people would have made canoes in this area and all over the world for thousands of years is similar to what we're doing here. We would have started our fire either in another fire pit or on the ground right near it, or maybe even in the canoe itself. And we would have transferred the embers into the canoe and slowly built up our fire. Now I've been letting this burn for about an hour. So you can see we've made a huge pile of ash, but our canoe is still very hot. And the whole idea is to have our fire burn down into the canoe and burn this big log itself. And as that happens, you'll see that the canoe itself starts to get white with ash, just like the fire inside of the boat. Now, if we move all of these coals, we will have a spot that we can clear and we can use different utensils or materials to scrape it out, similar to what people would have done here a thousand years ago. But in order to make a canoe like this, it would have been a communal effort. There would have been, you know, maybe 10 or 15 people all taking shifts, having a fire in one part of the tree, scraping in another part of the tree, but all in all, keeping the fire alive and burning down into the tree for as long as possible. And there are some different ways they might have done that. They might have taken sticks and moved some of the ashes from one section of the tree to another. They might have used bones to move around sticks selectively and burn where they wanted to inside of the boat. They could have taken large pieces of bark and covered the flames. So we don't have a ton of flame burning up, but our coals are still very, very hot. So what I've done is I've just moved some of my coals. I'm gonna take another large piece of bark and I'm gonna cover up the flame and extinguish it a bit. That way it's easier to work with in my area. So where the fire was just burning, I would probably wanna have my hands wet or the area itself wet because then I wouldn't burn myself. And I could take an oyster shell and slowly over time after the fire would have burned for a, a long, long, long time, hours on end, the wood becomes soft and it can be scraped away and even still be able to be burned. And if this process continued, moving the fire from one spot to another, having multiple teams scrape out the fire, having some people with just bones or bark fanning the flames to keep the heat down and hot inside of the wood. Over time, it was possible to carve out very elaborate boats used for fishing, for traversing across waterways, getting to places you couldn't get to by just walking and exploring all around the Chesapeake Bay, finding places to live, new resources to use, new food sources. So fire and the dugout canoe was an incredible technology for the people of this area and all over the world for thousands and thousands of years. Thanks for watching this episode of Outdoor Insiders and the Dugout Canoe. A couple activities you can try at home. Take a walk around in your neighborhood, in your yard, a short walk from your door. See if you can find a tree that you think would be good for a dugout canoe. You can see how many arm lengths around the tree is and how many people you think could fit inside of it. And for our dugout canoe, we use oyster shells once we moved our embers to scrape away the charred wood. What do you think around your home would be good for making a dugout canoe? You can also look online and see if you can find pictures or first-hand accounts of canoes made from a single tree. How many people could fit inside of them? How big were they? There's plenty to explore. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.